Can you see me? Yes. I can, Trish, is that Trish? Yes. I can't yes. see you, Trish. No. Okay, so I have to enable, um, do something here. Start yes. CEO. Hi, Trish. Gotcha. Phoenix. Yeah. So welcome, everybody, to the Quick Draw Club online. It's our third Quick Draw Club um, run by the Lismore Regional Gallery. And it's, um, it's great in these COVID times that we can have this online platform and really also showcase some of our fantastic artists that mm -hmm. we have here in our region. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging that we um, are here or I, where I work, where I live. This is the Bundjalung Nation um, of the Widjibal Wyabal people. And I would like to acknowledge the elders past, present, future and those emerging. So the Jajams here who will be the elders of the future. So Lismore Regional Gallery is here in this wonderful Bundjalung um, country and the Bundjalung people have been making art for thousands, tens of thousands of years, and it's a real honour for us to be here on this land. I want to introduce our quick draw artist, but before that, I just want to let everybody know that we are open! <laughs> so we opened yesterday, and we'll be open Wednesdays to Sundays. Uh, check our website for the times, and we've got some great exhibitions on. Check our website for that as well. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our quick draw artist, Tim Fry. He's a local artist. Um, I was just chatting with him. He was saying that he pretty much grew up in this area and he calls himself a bit of he's a hybrid artist. So painting, ceramics, drawing. He often uses um, found objects and repurposed objects like cardboard. And he's also been part of our Together Alone project. So. I will spotlight his video now so that you can um, meet him, hear about his studio and his practice. Um, so to you, Tim, I will just spotlight the video for you. There you hey, go. Guys. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for coming to my quick draw class, club class. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it feels a bit funny to be talking to people I can't see, but I'm really stoked that Claudia asked me to do this and it uh, feels like a, a bit of an honour to be doing this. And thanks for that great intro, Claudia. That was really, really nice too. Cheers. Um, so my name's Tim Fry. I'm an artist based in Lismore and I work with a range of materials, as Claudia said. Um, I guess I sort of like to go with the flow a bit. So at times I've done a lot of ceramic sculpture and at times I've done a lot of drawing or like I've used paint, elements of paint and collage and other stuff in my drawing, but I guess I just call it drawing for simplicity's sake. So I'm gonna take this off, this little mic, so I can get up and show you around my studio. I've just been sort of, I call it renovating, but I've just been doing up, schmicking up my little garage studio um, and having this workshop today was a good deadline for me to make some progress on it by. So I have previously had a lot of stuff stored on this wall, but I've just painted it up and then I was planning to put shelves here, but it was such a nice wall with white paint on it that I just got really excited about hanging some work on here. So I've got a few pieces up to show you. So this is a ceramic sculpture of a V-dub type two, an old, an old car, oh, sorry, here we go. So that's sort of an example of the sort of sculpture that I have done in the last couple of years. But there's also a lot more 2D stuff here. So there's a house, a drawing of a house here on cardboard framed behind glass. Um, that's like a, an appropriation or a, a rip off of a Howard Arkley work. But not, not a rip off in that sense, more of a, a nod to Howard Arkley because he's an artist that I've been inspired and my work's been informed by a lot. Um, so there's a couple of other pieces here. Another one on cardboard on the back of a, like a cereal box or something like that. It's a, a thin, thin ply cardboard, single layer, as opposed to this one where you can like see the corrugations. So it's like a thicker, thicker cardboard, you know, the composite ones with the waffly corrugations in the middle. 
and yeah it's a digger with some like lyrics that it's like it's a bit of a john williamson song that i've changed to comment on the adani protest mine situation um yeah i guess i like to use lyrics like i'm a pretty big fan of music and lyrics and they sort of work their way into my my work especially in the last maybe five years i've started using text in my drawings a lot and probably i sat on it and wanted to do that for about 10 years before that as well <laughs> so yeah i'm a big fan of using text in my work and humor and lyrics and you know rhyme and stuff as well and this is a, a more of a painterly piece um on an old bit of door like tongue and groove dooring and that's a, a recent um exploration for me a new material i started playing with and like using a router to carve these sort of sculptural elements i'm getting close I might get close. and once again some text in here and yeah i try not to go on for too long like it's pretty easy to get caught up in, in telling you my story, but I think it's nice to get into making stuff too. So I'll just show you a couple more things. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Um, Jer Jeremy Austin is on here and he suggested that maybe you could turn your camera to landscape. Is that possible? Yes. Have the technology, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No worries. There's another little piece on timber up here with text and some routing as well. Um, a bit of a humorous oh, i don't know how good the lighting is it's a bit of a joke about um the death of combustion engines and basically the environment and global warming and yeah the death of the internal combustion engine was a burning hot affair bit of a dad joke <laughs> um and cordy mentioned the together alone project this is one of the pieces i did for that which um, was a residency at home residency to support local artists to make work at home during Corona. And this is some lantana flowers blown up sort of, how's that? Can you see it? Yeah. And you can see the corrugations. One of the things I really dig about cardboard is the texture and it's sort of unpredictable nature, but, um, you know, you can peel like I cut, around my subjects to reveal these, well, to be able to peel back sections and get contrast and add like texture and depth. So that's one of the things that I love about cardboard, the reasons that I have been working with it for about 10 years. Okay. Now, just gonna sit back down. If any of you feel like asking me questions, I would urge you to do so because I feel like I'm having a one-sided one conversation. It feels a bit funny. <laughs> All right, lapel mic back on. So the longer I make art, I sort of feel like um, I'm gravitating towards an outsider art kind of practice where I just make stuff and I don't really like spending too long thinking and explaining it. And yeah, I guess outsider artists are defined as people who haven't studied art and kind of just do their own thing. They're kind of naive in a way or considered naive. That's the name. And yeah, I guess I sort of make playful work and I like to talk about things that I think are serious, but do it in a playful way that people can engage with. So I make, you know, pretty bright, colorful, playful images um, that I think people will connect to and they're accessible to a wide range of people, not just people who've studied art or anything like that. So I guess, I was a bit non-prescriptive. I don't know what you guys have um, bought in to draw today. I guess I often find myself drawing whatever's around me, like I have themes and, you know, sometimes I'm a bit 
more specific or intentional about it, but I've certainly over the years drawn a lot of a lot of everyday objects, and I feel like there's a nice simplicity in drawing simple things, and something cool about celebrating everyday objects and simple things as well, which is, you know, I don't know what the chicken or the egg is because it's easy to draw whatever's around you, but there's also a sort of I don't know something humble but beautiful about uh, just drawing everyday stuff and sort of celebrating it sort of like an empowering thing I think to just be like my life's awesome or you know whoever you are or whatever you're doing whatever things are in your life to sort of appreciate them so anyway I chose one of my son's uh, plastic garden rakes today as my subject because I thought in an hour if I start something more complex, like I did think about drawing a Tonka truck or a toy car, which I, you know, I quite like the idea of doing that, but I've just chosen this rake because it's a simple form. I won't get too caught up in perfecting anything complex with too much perspective. So I should be able to finish it and get into coloring and playing with the composition and fine tuning it, not just spend an hour roughing out the shapes which is what I often would do with a car or something more complicated sorry I'm just reading the closed captions here <laughs> um, yeah as I said feel free to turn your microphones on if you want to say something or anything respond or tell me what you guys have bought to work with as a subject and materials do you want um, people, maybe people can put their like hand hand up and I'll, I can unmute them or yeah, oh, Trisha's got, Trisha's got her jug there. <laughs> I'll just unmute you, Trish. I've just unmuted you, Trish, if you want to. Okay. I just thought a nice simple shape and I like the colour um, and, I, and I've got some cardboard ready to go, like whatever. I'm just ready to be showing what you do and join in. So thank you. It's going to be good. <laughs> Thanks. So where are we? I work with like paint pens a lot now. Um, these sort of things. See my little stash here. They're like a giant texter, essentially, with a quite a big rectangular nib, and they're filled with a an alcohol-based acrylic. So they're pretty much like painting from a texter. All right, I have to turn this around because it's sort of flopping on me. So yeah, I've been drawing. I don't know my whole life, but the last ten years I've been drawing on cardboard, and I've always used a biro, and I sort of felt a bit funny about that for a long time, but then I sort of got into it at some point, started enjoying it, or I don't know, I guess I got to a point where I liked what I could do with it, and then that gave me confidence to keep going and feel like it was an okay thing to do. Um, so I've always done line work with biros, and I'll show you, you can see that I still use a lot of, a lot of line work with a biro, and Yeah, even when we use colours, a lot of colour, I still like to let the biro do a fair bit of visual talking. But what I was going to say was previous to using these paint pens, because in about 2014, I taught somewhere and I um, discovered these. But before that, I used like gouache and watercolour and chalk pastels and collage. So that's why I said in the description, like it's sort of, doesn't matter too much what you use for color. It's, you know, it's good to sort of play with what you have and work within your capabilities and not make art this hard to get to thing to buy specialized stuff. You know, that said, these are awesome and a lot of fun. You can get them at Office Works or you can get them online from Ironlac. Um, and Posca's are good too. They're a bit more like a texter. These ones are a lot more like painterly and they have a pretty nice finish. And the, the you don't get the sort of texture marks that you get with a texture. Anyway, I feel like I'm, I'm yabbering on now. So 
Let's start. I'm going to start. If you guys want to get your, I presume you're all ready, you've got your materials, you've just been listening to me do this intro. I'm going to put that slopey end down that end of the head. So I have quite a rough style and I used to think there was something wrong with that, but I've just learned to sort of harness it. So I don't draw with a pencil and then go over my lines. I draw with a biro and then as I decide, you know, and I might draw a whole lot of lines and then I might decide, you know, at this point that line is a bit long, so I'm going to cut it off and I just reinforce or thicken the lines once I decide um, where that, where I think they should be. If that makes sense. And I don't worry too much about being rough and messy because it sort of comes out in the wash, if that makes sense. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect and you can sort of keep going over the lines that you want to stay. And especially if you're using colors, like with these paint pens, you can cover any lines that you don't want to be there. Wide at the beginning here. I'm just gonna you know, nice thing, uh, well, something that I like to use is you can use these corrugations as a measure so I can look at them easily to tell how big a difference there is in the thickness of this handle here. Um, I draw pretty intuitively or make art pretty intuitively. And I guess that takes time to develop the confidence to be all right with that. But I do think that's a pretty good way to work intuitively. I don't think there are any hard and fast rules that I've been shown anyway that, that you know, that are better than intuitive working. Brush miles. I hadn't had a good etching teacher at TAFE 12 years ago. He was a very seasoned veteran art maker. And she said, brush miles, you can't beat brush miles. That's pretty true. It's taken me a long time to sort of really dig my mark making and my drawing, but it did happen eventually. <laughs> Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Yep, Tim, I've got you on the, I flooded the video that you're drawing from. So yep. we're, the main thing we can see now is you drawing. Gonna bring this in a bit because as you can see it's a lot wider here than here. Um don't know if you'll bring it in there. And then you've got these sort of lines here, it's cut into kind of thirds. It's kind of like drawing fingers. If you've ever drawn hands, they have this fingers seem to curve in that same that same sort of way. These prongs are. So this is like a rib here.
Yeah, so I'm just working it out as I go. I feel, feel like I should be saying more, but just sort of concentrating on this and working out how I'm gonna <laughs> how I'm gonna do this. So I'm just looking at these fingers. Can you see? Yeah, I'm just looking at these fingers, thinking about how much space to leave between the tops so that I can then add another line to get this side in to give it the depth. It's a lot of trial and error, but I think it's just really important to not be too precious. And I feel like I'm kind of on TV at the moment, so it makes me want to do everything perfect, but really just rough it out and have a look. And if it doesn't work, draw it again. And it's good to draw the first lines a bit lighter. Probably doing mine a little bit dark here, but if you draw them lightly, then it's easy to draw over them. Or draw next to them. How's that look? Yeah, cool. And I'll dip down a bit here. I need to come out a tiny bit more. The other thing that's funny when you're when you're working on fine detail because I have a pretty rough style when when I'm working on fine detail I get really get really caught up in really subtle little things thinking it's going to be a big deal but often like with that lantana picture I showed you before like when I was doing the initial drawing I was like oh this is so far off what it's meant to look like but when you zoomed in you're far cr more critical I guess when you zoom out on something, you don't notice anywhere near as much. Um, things things that can look messy in fine detail when you zoom in often don't look so messy when you zoom back out. But I've just noticed I'm looking at what I'm going to call the knuckle here. This just where it goes from straight to the dips down. I'm looking at that knuckle, and my perspective looks like that knuckle grows closer to the outside here. So I actually want to move this line like that because up the far end, it's really short and steep. And I haven't really catered to that. So these sort of need to come out a bit further and then dip sharply. I've done here, if we bring this out a little bit more. Bring these up. There. Hey, Tim, I have a question for you. Um, when did you first start making art and was uh, were you influenced by someone in your family or how did art come into your life? That's a very good question, Claudie. Thank you. <laughs> um, my mum made stuff like she was kind of creative and her whole side of the family is kind of creative as well. Like I remember when I was young, she painted but then she also did like woodworking courses and quite sculptural woodworking and a bit of carving. And her mum was a sewer, so they both sewed and they all, that my whole mum's side of the family are all foodies and they were really like quite creative and passionate about food and cooking. So I think, and then, yeah, even my, one of my mum's brothers is a painter as well and a carver, a sculptor, so, you know, like not, not 
like really solid, like consistently, but certainly painted off and on most of his life. So yeah, some of those guys um, were quite creative and, you know, like naturally or, yeah, they were quite creative and had an appreciation for creative stuff and all seem to have various create creative outlets from gardening and cooking to painting and sculpture. Um, but I guess, I don't know, like it took me a long time to wrap my head around what, what being an artist was or how to go about it. It seemed like this ambiguous mythical creature. And so like I really dug art in high school, but, um, but I didn't really see any many professional artists around me or people who were even really dedicated to it. Well, there must have been some around. I don't really remember many people around like pursuing art per se. And I certainly didn't really have a clear map in my head of how you went about doing that. So I didn't really have a sense that it was a thing you could go and do, even though I really liked art. And then, yeah, at some point, like I knew that I was into art, but I didn't have that confidence to go and study it. So I did a fair bit of it in high school. And then after a couple of years working and like studying environmental science and doing different things, um, someone encouraged me to, to go and study art because I knew that I really, really enjoyed it. It's like a, I had to bridge a mental gap between knowing that you really like something and being okay with do that in your life um so yeah then that was probably like 12 13 years ago this year so i went and studied at tafe and that just like really kind of changed my life and i've been making a lot of art you know since um with natural i guess ebbs and flows that you have as an artist but yeah certainly for the last like 13 years i've been making a fair bit of work And that's gave me the confidence and sort of, I guess I learned a lot of different processes, but gave me the confidence that sort of like, I think of it sometimes as like a religion, like the way you, not in a dogmatic, like you must do this kind of way, but it's sort of like this, I guess something that you dedicate yourself to or you get so sort of dedicated well, people, to. People use the term spiritual practice and, and on arts practice, maybe some people's arts practice is a bit like a spiritual practice. Totally. Totally. So, and, yeah, um, that was your question? <laughs> yeah, that's great. And um, I, I was just wondering, like, you know, you've been working on um, the quad and gallery, gallery, uh, Lismore Regional Gallery alone together, a uh, together alone project. And uh, that's been an interesting project for you as well as you've got some stuff you've got a show on at the moment at m arts in yeah. Yeah. yeah i just wondered if you wanted to while you draw and um yeah wanted to mention any of of that stuff i do thank you i am slipping into doing one thing and not multitasking very well at all <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess actually that's a good segue the first part of a drawing for me, like nutting out the lines and getting the form is like the, the toughest bit and I have to concentrate really hard um, and I might redo lines five, even ten times, like with things that have multiple parts, like with that jug you had, you might draw the body of the jug and then add the handle and then look at the handle and think the spout's too big, proportionate to the handle and, you know, I've drawn cars a fair bit and cars are a fair bit like faces you look at them quite critically and so you might add a part like a wheel or a, a window or something and then you end up changing like you, you compare the proportions of different parts to something like that so i could spend a fair bit of time concentrating on getting the subtle nuances right in this case getting these little fingers of the rake right <laughs> um but yeah my, I have a solo show up at the Wool Bar. It's, in, it's called Gallery Downtown. I live near the hospital and I can hear the helicopter. Can you guys hear me all right over the helicopter? Yeah, Just, I can hear you. I can actually hear the helicopter. 
Sweet. Oh, that's good. But that I, must be very exciting for your, for your son. Yeah. He like runs out to the front gate and you can see it. He's kind of, he, he hears planes. I think they must finish work and fly their planes in the afternoon. He loves to run out and check them out too. <laughs> So anyway, back to your earlier question though, Claudia. Tim, I'm just gonna um, spotlight your face now so we can see your face talking about this. Is that okay with you? That's an excellent idea. Okay. <laughs> hey. Uh, so, yeah, so I, we did, well, the quad and the gallery ran a program I mentioned earlier, Together Alone, through May. I think maybe late April and through May, you know, during the height of Corona of COVID. And it basically gave people like a week of paid work at home to pursue a specific project that they, you know, proposed. And the project that I proposed was about sort of giving people a sense of hope. And I guess I think that's a pretty universal, like some people have said to me that I think like they've related it specifically to Corona. And I think it's relevant at that time, but hope is also, you know, is, is a good thing or the thing that I think you need a lot of the time. And it's important to have hope all the time. And it's not just during pandemics that you might feel a sense of hopelessness or that you might benefit at a lot of times from a bit more hope. So anyway, I made this body of work called Hope Reflected. And I sort of talked to some people or re recorded some people talking who I knew had been through some difficult situations in their life. And I just got them to talk a little bit about what gave them a sense of hope to get through those situations or, you know, what was the sense of hope for them getting through tough times in general without prying too much into their situations. And so then I, took, I recorded a short video, uh, sorry, not video, audio recording of them discussing hope. And then I responded to that. So I feel like I should show you the picture again, but I made that Lantana drawing and another big, large scale Brevilia drawing that I'm still sort of finishing off. And while I made them, I used not slow motion, stop, not stop motion, the other one, time-lapse. I used time-lapse to record them. And I made sort of a short video of the production of the work and I overlaid the audio. So yeah, you can listen to the person describing hope for them and watch me creating an artwork in response to that. So yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was, it was quite interesting. I haven't done much. Uh, video editing and making before and I sort of essentially made a couple of video works short video works and I also came away with these large drawings um, and even the drawings were out of my comfort zone because they were like big flowers which isn't something I've drawn a lot I have drawn plants and I do find trees and plants interesting but not big flowers like this so that was really cool um, Where, where, where will we be able to see um, those together alone drawings? So, yes. And the video. On my, on my Instagram, but also yeah. on the Quads website, I believe. Okay. So if you look up the Great. Quad Lismore or the Quad, they have, I haven't double checked, but they said that they would be posted on their website. And I, I think they posted it on their Instagram, but I certainly posted it on my Instagram which is Tim with two M's, T I double M underscore Fry. And you can see everything I've made in the last five years there, but there's a couple of videos, a few posts back that will show you the video works that I've made. Great. Um, hey, Tim, um, Phoenix, wanted, who's on here with us, she just wanted to share what she's been doing so far. Maybe we should do a little share to see, you know. Um, That'd be great. <laughs> also got her video on. A lot of other people haven't got their video on. They're kind of listening and maybe drawing. Um, but shall we have a look, Phoenix, at what you... Yeah, that'd be awesome. You, just, um, you have to unmute yourself there, Phoenix, and I'll, I'll spotlight you. So Phoenix um, 
It's really exciting to show us what she's got. She's been using a, a few different materials and things. Yeah. Oh, you've been, and she did a painting. She was working on a painting before she came. This is the painting that I was working on before. Yeah. Kind of hard though. Yeah, great. Nice well, purples. So what I used was um, this old paint lid. And what I did was I got the paint and I just put blobs of it in a, um, in a pattern then put it on the thing and then just scraped it like that and made the um, stripe pattern. You drag. Have you been drawing along with Tim as well at the moment? Yes, I have. Do you want to show us what you've been doing? What object were you using? Um, I was drawing a rose. Yeah, cool. Flower. Great. Oh. Yeah, rad. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful petals. Thank you. Is there something, what, what's the ring of, is there like a series? What are the, what's the larger circle of, of dots around the rose? Is there something? Um, those are more of them. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Phoenix, for sharing that with us. We'll, we'll check in with you again at the end and, and see how you're going. Okay. Okay, I'm going to spotlight you, Trish. I'm just going to... Um, where are we? There you go. Um, you just have to unmute yourself there, Trish. Okay. I had an old box oh. in and yeah, I had a go... I pulled out, pulled out some of my old pastels. I haven't done it. I haven't done some drawing for a long, long time. So I was using this tonight to just sort of, just do some drawing. So yeah. there's my junk. Looks really good. I, I like doing that. I liked how it was like, so not precious. Like we're just gonna use an old piece of cardboard and have a go and start off rough and, and yeah. then just try it. And then I went back around with some black marker. I had some uh, yeah. black Sharpie or something. I started off with yeah. some green one and then, and then just used a couple of, found a really nice match of the, of the the color for the for the jug which is yeah jug. that color is quite in in vogue at the moment again isn't it <laughs> it is and this is this is what i got at the red hill um red cross op shop in brisbane about 10 years ago and it's actually what's it from um oh, Villeroy and bosch yeah right it's a really old jug and so that's when that color was in in the 50s or whenever it was in last yeah <laughs> i do i do rather like that color so i just like to, yeah that was just nice to have a go at. and i mean it's a bit wonky but it's, i like it that it's a bit wonky yeah you've got to celebrate the wonk <laughs> celebrate the wonk and and just and just enjoy just making some marks really yeah. enjoy yeah. That's actually my favourite colour. That's so beautiful. Oh, thank you, Claudia. It is actually, it's that nice uh, Australian greenish um, colour that you see. Uh, oh, look, actually, what have I got here? A little old piece of fabric that's got some of that in it too. You know, like mm -hmm. when I look around, I've actually got a lot of it. And um, I do, um, do love sorry. that colour. Yeah. Thank Phoenix you. was saying before she wrote us a little chat before saying that she'd love to use pastels, uh, but her mum says she makes a bit too much of a mess at home. But I think you use pastels sometimes at school, hey Phoenix. Well, people say pastels are messy, but I taught myself pastels thirty years ago, and I didn't. I didn't get that memo, so I just do what I do. <laughs> just I don't find them that messy. Uh, I reckon oil paints are messy. You know, it depends. It depends on what you want to have a go at, and you and if you're just if you're selective about your colours, um, and you have to, you do have to you take the paper off and use it, and your fingers do get dirty. Some people don't like that, but I, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. You can get really nice, rich colours layering chalk pastels too, or underpainting yeah. chalk yeah. pastels over the top. Yeah, you have done a lot of pastel, but I wanted to get back into. But I haven't touched them for a long, long time. I sorted them all out and put them all in these lovely little boxes and got it all sorted. But I haven't actually done a pastel 
anything for a long, long time. So this was a nice drawing exercise. And I thought, yeah, I actually had planned to just use textures and highlighters and, and but then when I, when I just got going with it, I thought, no, <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, I'll try and match that green. Or, not that it had to be a perfect match, but I like the way it goes on that cardboard color. And that's, yeah. uh, that's a nice thing with pastel is that it looks good on a neutral, that cardboardy thing. And I'm a preschool teacher from way back and I love recycling cardboard. So I'm fully, fully on with the cardboard <laughs> and the corrugations and everything. Pastels are really good. If like I've done a bit of where I've like painted or you might, you know, use some acrylic or paint marker or whatever. And then a layer of um, chalk pastels picks up the corrugation. So you sort of get some nice, nice patterns and undulations. It doesn't go on evenly. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and I'm in Moreland Bar. So I'll go back and have another look at your work now that I've done this with you. Yeah, I do. I've got a piece I got highly commended in the Border Art Prize. I've got a, a, a card drawing framed up in the foyer of the main gallery. And I've got a solo show down in the gallery downtown, which is the yep. sort of annex of the Tweed uh -huh. region. Yeah, yeah, I'll go have a look. Please do. <laughs> Thank you. I'll book in. You've got to book in to go to the big gallery, so I haven't even tried yet. You can just rock up because I went up there yesterday to see it and you can rock up and put your name on the list, I think, because they've got a lot of floor space. I don't know that they've had to turn anyone away. Oh, you, okay. like, you can, you know, it's good to be organised, I guess, and you can book in. But like if you end up there having not booked in, I think they will still let you in. Mm -hmm. I yeah. will. I'll just rock on down. Thank <laughs> you. Well. I'm Tim, keep... would you like me to move you, the camera back, spotlight the drawing space again? Yeah, I feel like everyone's progressed past me, so I need to get on with mine. <laughs> um, something I did forget to put in the like materials list was a Stanley knife, and this is something that you might like to try later um, or now if you're like, finished, but just don't do it on anything precious. Like I have a cutting mat that I usually use or I work on an old table. But if you have finished your form and you're looking interested in playing with the corrugations, you cut around your subject and you can peel off the top layer of cardboard. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a bit fiddly and you might find it's a long job, but um, it's quite an interesting way to create depth and contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, enough, enough of that. I better concentrate on this. I think colour and bold line is a nice way to sort of frame a simple subject. I think, you know, in a traditional drawing context, drawing a, a basic object can be, or, you know, you can look at it and think that it's not enough or you need to do more with it. But I find certainly like, I haven't always drawn in such a simple way, but over time you sort of simplify, I've grown to simplify my compositions and to like appreciate less is more and to, work out which bits to strip back and which bits to leave. And yeah, through using like, I quite like the way a simple subject can look with really bold lines and um, a simple bright color scheme. I tend to get confused if I use too many colors. So I like to keep it to a few and, and like just add them sometimes cautiously because if I end up adding, you know, more than three colors too quickly, I can sort of not be happy with an image and I can't work out what it needs. So 
reducing colours for me is a good way to work out what a drawing needs and get happy with it and just slowly add colours. So I tend to work really fast at the beginning trying to get lines right and then I'll smash out 80% of the drawing and then get to the last few decisions or the last little bits and really slow down um, to try and work out what the last few things I need to do are. I'm just looking at my rake, thinking I need to add this edge along here to give it depth and probably some tone. I really like the sort of tone shading we can create with a fire rake. And I'm quite a fan of high contrast as well. It's probably the other element that I really enjoy using to create sort of like an iconic image. It's like strong lines, high contrast and um, central compositions, <laughs> which sometimes, you know, can take a bit of practice to be comfortable with central compositions. And I think if you don't blow your subject up enough, you don't make it big and own the page or the ground you're working on, then it can look a bit funny if it floats in the middle. But um, yeah, if you make it nice and bold, like take up most of the page. then it, it looks like it's meant to be there. It has that kind of Soviet propaganda poster kind of oomph about it. <laughs> so, one of the other tricks I guess that I like to use is using a bright, a lighter colour for my subject and a dark colour for my background. And that helps to make the subject pop. Um, I recently had a commission, someone got me to draw their 79 F100 ute and it was a quite a dark metallic colour. And it took me a long time to wrangle it, to be happy with it because it was a dark subject and I had a light background, which is the opposite of how I like to work. Especially if you're you know, working with like a still life or a single subject and you want to make it pop, using a lighter and a brighter color for the object or the subject rather, um, will help it do that. Anyway. Running out of time, 10 minutes left. So probably, if I, where are we here? If I keep working on this, like probably tonight during this workshop, I'll color this in as best I can. After I've colored it in, I'm gonna shade all of these little uh, side sections and shade this um, with the black biro, just gently adding tone and sort of stop and have a look and see what I think of it. And once I've done the coloring, I'll also go over all of my lines because that gives them, I guess I think the ink sort of soaks in and fades a little bit. But also if you're coloring in, it's easy to go over your line work and I don't have to be too precious if I know I'm gonna go over it all again with the biro. Um, so yeah, there's a basic form. It's gonna, can't, I can't turn it side on. I wanna stand it up and look at it end on, but I think that's gonna, be good. There's also some other little dealio holes here. I've got a I've got a question for you, Tim. Do you choose the direction of the cardboard? Is it important, like the cardboard goes long ways like that? I see that you're drawing the object um, going along the cardboard. No, not really. I don't usually. I usually will. Yes, there's a relationship between the subject and the shape of the piece of cardboard, but it's more like I don't really like to have a lot of cardboard on hand and cut it down to size. I kind of like to find a piece when I need it 
that fits the subject that I'm going to draw and a, the scale or size I think that it should work. And depending like where I am and how much space I have, like the great thing about working this way is like you can start, certainly the, the biro part is really versatile in where you work on it. You can start it or do the biro piece part of it anywhere. Um, the colouring in, you know, or the painting or whatever you do is a little bit more uh, studio demanding, but <laughs> you can sort of start these drawings, especially smaller ones. You can start them anywhere in a park, in the car, on your lunch break or whatever, which is great. But no, like the corrugations, I, they're sort of like a surprise and I don't even always use them. Like I don't always cut the top off. I do a lot, but I don't know. Not always. Um, and sometimes when I can't work out the colour scheme, like with those big flowers that I did for Together Alone, I just, I didn't want to add any more colours than I already had in the flower and I didn't want to detract from the colour of the subject. So it's a good way of resolving an image that doesn't need much is to just peel this back off and it gives it a sense of completion. Like it gives it a, a finished edge without the, without adding another colour that might detract from it. And I guess I get kind of like confused by too many colours and I feel like I can't resolve an image when I add too many colours. So yeah. Sublime, I'm just looking for a nice green. Chameleon. Hmm, that'll be good. So I tend to use the big ones of these because they're, I guess they last longer and they're good for covering large areas. And I'm not a super slow, patient person. I don't like to work. If I can avoid it, I don't like to work in a super fiddly slow way. But to get small marks or to colour in small areas, I just work with the corner or the edge of this nice rectangular nib, and that allows me to have control. Uh, there we go. Nice fine lines and stay within your within your line work. And you can rub it off a bit when you go over it like that. Has anyone got any more questions? Phoenix has a question. Do you have a question, Phoenix? Um, you got, she's got a hand up there. Uh, yeah. Um, I just want to. I I just want to know where you get the paint pens from. So I, yeah. Yeah, no worries. I used to buy them online. Well, I used to buy Poskas from News Agents. That's another brand, but I don't think they're as good. I don't find that, like they're more like a normal texture and less like paint. Um, so now I've started using these ones in the last few years, and they sell them at Officeworks. I used to buy them online from their website, but then Officeworks has started selling them, and I think they're okay. even cheaper at Officeworks than they were on the website too. So. Okay, thank you. So have a look. When I bought these, they were getting rid of one of the sizes. Maybe it was 12 or 15 mil. And in the under sale items, they had like an 18 pack for maybe 50 bucks, which is like less than $3 per texter. And I got some colors that I don't usually use, but it was heaps more cost effective than buying them individually, which is like maybe 6 or $7. Does that company, Tim, do they have um, a refill sometimes? They you can do. I've, had, I've bought the refills a bit, but I find these big ones are really hard. The smaller ones, I haven't got many of these. This is like a seven mil or something. And it unscrews on the top and is really like, it's essentially just like a hollow in there that you can uh, pour the refill into, which is quite good. But the big ones have a sort of valve that you're meant to refill through. And I find that I feel like I'm losing about as much paint trying to refill it as 
is going in. So I don't really use the refills, Claudie. So theoretically, I did think about drilling a hole in the bottom, pouring, <laughs> pouring the refill in and putting a little silicon over it, but I haven't Crafty. got it. This thing is meant to be a valve. So you sort of squeeze this little, I've got a few refills that I bought um, and it's got a little nib and you sort of do this and squirt it in. But there's some sort of valve and a lot leaks over the top. So it put me off and I haven't really done it much since. So I've had a few cracks at it and I've emailed them and the, the, the tutorials are pretty basic and they don't really, haven't shed any light for me on how to do it properly in a way that I don't lose a lot of paint. And I think the cost of the refills is pretty similar. It's not significantly less than the, these big textures as well. So, yeah. And so, um, uh, don't worry too much about going over six o'clock, Tim, because I think we have this meeting booked till 6.30. So if you've got, if you um, don't feel too much pressure and uh, uh, people might want to show us at the end what they've made, they wanna, might want to ask a few more questions. So um, yeah. yeah, I think if, they, if people want to show now, or I'm happy to, happy to see. I'll spotlight you, Trish, just one second. <laughs> I'm behind the scenes. Yeah, spotlight. Right. You can tap dance. I'm going to put a bit of colour on the back of it too. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, that's that lovely sort of cyan blue. Yeah. Which was um, nice to use. I'll just hold it still for a sec. Yeah, so that was, that was nice because I, I wasn't trying to make it into a Margaret Ollie still life with the, the, the proper like the tabletop and the cloths and everything. It's just, it's the object in space. It's quite a nice, simple go at it. Yeah, it's sitting nice in the middle and the brown of the cardboard makes things look more finished. Like if that was white coming through, I think it would feel unfinished, but it looks really yeah. nice. Yeah, well you don't, when when you use pastel, generally speaking, you would only ever use mid-tone or not a very, although you can buy a white pastel board, which I don't like. I tried it once and I felt like you were trying to paint onto a white sheet and it was, you were fighting against that white all the time. So this, that, that's a, that's a pretty good neutral colour. Yeah. It's, no, it's, uh, there's some uh, echoes of Mirandi in there. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'll take that. Beautiful <laughs> colour palette. I'll take that one. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Domestic. Uh, that, was, that was fun. It made me do a drawing. It's five o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. Like, you know, it's a, you can, it was, if I have a deadline and a commit, it's just a great little idea. And, I'll, and it'll make me get my pastels out and do a few more little simple ones. And yeah. Because I used to do an awful lot of like that one over the back there. That's a pastel I would have done 30 years ago, like um, pastel landscape and, you know, looking at the landscape. But I haven't done a lot of pastel just looking at objects, small zone, zooming into objects. Hmm. I guess anything is like a landscape. If you zoom in enough, there's a lot of little nuances in very boring things. <laughs> well, good point too. And it, like when I was doing it, if I went to a life drawing class you know you're looking at the shapes and the folds and the shoulders and the the the, the hips and the thighs and everything is a, is like a landscape everything if that's if that's your thing <laughs> so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you it was good it, thank you Trish thanks for being on here with us it's lovely to see your your studio space as well there yeah, yeah well, I, I commandeered the big front room. Now all the kids have left home. Oh, well, actually one just came back. But anyway, I, this is the biggest room in the house and because I, I outgrew my little studio. So I've just got a lot of books and things I want to keep all in one place now. Because for many, many years I didn't have a studio. I just had tabletop and my lap and the, do stuff out in the paddock. But now I, yeah. I just like to have everything around me. I think um, that's one of the things of this COVID times is that we've actually through Zoom or Skype or these kind of meetings we're having, we actually get to see into people's homes a lot more. It's quite intriguing, I think. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. And, and to be forced to do something like, who would have thought you could do a, an art class by Zoom? Like, 
It would have yeah. been scorned. Yeah, it would totally. have been scorned as inferior uh, or, or just wouldn't work. But it, it's, we've proved that Zoom works for lots of things. There is merit when you're forced to do things sometimes you discover. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I'm wondering if Phoenix, because uh, everybody else has their video turned off. I think they're kind of just watching and listening. Yeah. Probably making some beautiful things. And if anybody out there and it might want to show, they can show as well. Um, but Phoenix, do you want to show us what, uh, what you finished up there with? It's not completely finished. I've actually started to use paint. So it's a bit wet at the moment. Oh, wet sorry, just a moment. minute. Wait a second. I'll spotlight your video. Sorry. I'm all right. all a bit, you know, we're all a bit new at this technology thing, but we're getting there. Okay. Okay. It's, I've just started using paint. I use black for border because I don't have anything else to make a border with. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, I see. I was trying to work out what you've done. <laughs> Looks great. That's the one I did. I've been doing now. I've got heaps of other canvases that I've done paintings on, and heaps of other stuff like that. And then I've got heaps of recycled card that I've been given. That I'm using for decorations on card, other card, and it's a lot of fun to use all this. So right. I try and keep as much rubbish as possible to recycle it. But yeah, it's just because. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, it's great to work with old materials, recycled stuff. Yeah. I actually... Um, um, some interesting things you wouldn't think of going... Well. I actually recycled a um, wrapping paper tube and I cut it up into little pieces and I painted them. And I turned them into kind of like an ombre kind of effect on both the inside, uh, the inside and outside. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing with it is I'm going to get like clear, um, I think like tape or something, and then I'm going to tape it, and it's going to be like a holder for pens and stuff like that. So awesome! That's so awesome, Phoenix. What an incredibly arty person you are. Yeah. yeah. You're keen. Oh, so cool. Yeah, that's great. Thank and you. it's great to see you repurposing things, like in a way similar to what Tim's practice does. He uses a lot of repurposed materials. It's excellent. Yeah, and that, can, may I sh can I please show you a picture of this dragon head that I drew? Please do. <laughs> Oh. Um, hold on. My thing's just glitched out. We can see you. You're still there. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just it glitched out. Okay, hold on. Oh, fantastic. Ooh. Rad. <laughs> I like that it's got the dark lines around the outside, a bit similar to what you do as well, Tim, to create that kind of border where the inside really stands out a lot more. Yeah, totally. Some nice depth in the mouth as well. Thank you. Stick your hand in there. <laughs> I got that. I've got that one, and then I've got this one that I drew from just. Pokemon, because I'm I kind of am obsessed with that at the moment. Christmas Pokemon. <laughs> yes. Rad. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing those with us, Phoenix. And Trish, thank you for sharing your stuff. And thank and, you. Um, and thank you, Tim, for what um, you've given us tonight. I'm just going to spotlight your video again, Tim. Yep. No, thank you for the so opportunity. There like you I are. I <laughs> hope it's been um, valuable for you guys. It's kind of funny just not getting the feedback you would get in a normal classroom or social situation. So 
yeah, I've probably been a bit more nervous than I normally would in front of real people, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, thanks heaps for the opportunity, Claudie. Um, and it's good fun to try and make technology work for us as well. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for coming, guys, to to have a listen and a, and a, and a play, a draw with me. Well, it's been our pleasure to have you, Tim. And, um, you know, come on into the Lismore Regional Gallery, everybody, and see what we've got going on. And check out Tim's Together Alone on the Quad webpage or on his Instagram page. And thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Can I just ask? Oh, yes, just one second. I, yeah. I missed in the captions both times when you were talking about your solo exhibition in Mawulamba. Yep. What's the name of that gallery? It's called Gallery Downtown, but it's in the M Arts building. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh, Corinne. She is our closed caption person. So we've had closed captions going, which is uh, great. And we also have made this into a video. Uh, in, we've recorded it. So we'll be able to um, put that up on our YouTube channel. So people will be able to see the superstar that is Tim Fry on our YouTube, you, Tim. YouTube channel. I think I need a headdress like yours to call myself <laughs> that. <monster>. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you, Tim. And thank you, everybody else, for joining. Oh, Phoenix has one more question. And Actually, then... I have one more thing that I did, and it's on oh, a can. Okay. Let me yep. just spotlight you so we can check it out. I did this probably a month ago. Yeah, cool. Lovely, abs very abstract. Beautiful colours. Colours, yeah, the colours oh. are great. It took me about a week to make. Yeah, right. Wow. Good so, on you. Fifi or Phoenix, make sure you come into the gallery sometime so we can meet you and um, show you around. I would, okay. I would love to. Okay, awesome. Excellent. Is this on um, like every Thursday or is it just this Thursday? Oh, just one second. I think it's monthly, every month. Okay. The um, third Thursday of the month um, and always at five o'clock. Um, originally it was going to be in the gallery, but of course COVID turned up and so now we're doing it online and eventually we'll have it back in the gallery. So our next artist, which um, I will put up tomorrow, the event for it is Emma Burrows, who's an amazing um, artist who lives in Melbourne, but who used to live here in Lismore, uh, who's going to do contour line drawing with us. So something to look forward to next month. Yes. Uh, well, thanks everyone. Good night. Thanks, Trish. Good night. Good night, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Phoenix. Thanks, everybody else who was on here too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Narelle. Thanks for voting for me. <laughs> <laughs>